Hello YouTube, this is Learn Tutorials. Welcome to your 24th GIMP tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Levels tool in GIMP. Let's get started. First, go to the Colors tab, go down to Levels, and you're going to have a dialog pop up. It's probably not going to be that big. It's, I think it was like that big when I first opened it. But anyway, you're going to have a ton of stuff on here, but m some of it you already know. For example, you know presets preview and these four buttons down here in case you ever need help so anyway there is a button right here edit these settings as curves if you click on it it's going to open the curves tool and it'll import all of the settings from the levels tool into the curves tool which is really nice if you like the curves tool a lot so if i go back to the levels tool you're going to see that there is a graph if i make it bigger it's going to represent all of the pixels in the image so any of them over here about are shadows any of them over here are midtones and any of them over here are highlights and this bar is the same that was in the curves tool i think there are also some triangles underneath the bar, which actually are sliders that you can slide. So that's uh, nice. It's actually, I think, like the main point of the tool. There is a shadows slider. It lets you control the shadows. Midtones lets you control the midtones and a highlights slider. Now, if I slide these sliders, which is what they're made for, if I take the shadows slider and I move it up, you're gonna see that the image gets a lot darker. Now, if I hit reset, and if I move the highlights slider, the image gets a lot brighter. But GIMP is doing a lot more than just making the image brighter or darker. What it's doing when you move the shadows slider up is it's telling GIMP that you want any pixels this dark or darker to turn into black because this is the think of it like a threshold anything darker than this automatically becomes black that is why the image is so dark now you can do the opposite over here with the highlights tool you can see the image becomes a whole lot lighter it's saying hey i want to take all of the pixels this brightness or brighter which are all of these over here and i want to make them white so there that's why there is the image is so much brighter it's just setting thresholds there's also the midtone slider if you move that it doesn't always have to be in the middle by the way if you're ever moving this stuff you can move it wherever you want but anyway what it does is that if you move the midtones slider over here, I should probably make this a little bit smaller so you can see the image while I do this. If you move it over here, what it's going to do is it's going to take these this group of pixels near the slider and it's going to make those the midtones instead. Now, because the midtones are over here now instead of in the middle like they usually are, that means that all of these other pixels become highlights think of it like that they all become highlights so that's why the image gets a lot brighter now if you move the slider over to the right the midtones are now over here instead of in the middle therefore there becomes there's a ton of shadows there the amount of shadows just increases so that's why the image gets uh, it becomes darker now there are numbers you can mess around with if you want and there's also some color pickers too so you can pick the black point which is going to if you click I'm, I'm not going to tell you I'm just going to show you if you click on this stripe on the rug right here you're going to see that the image gets a whole lot darker but whatever you clicked on becomes black and also you can have a sample average too in case you want more than one pixel but what it what that does is that 
this whatever you clicked on is the darkest that the image is going to get now if you pick the white point with this color picker right here that's going to whoops that is going to pick the highlight slider and it's going to move that to where it wants to go so if you click right here that becomes the threshold for the highlights if you click somewhere like right here you can see it gets a whole lot brighter so that's what input levels do and that's just on the value channel too so moving on let's go to output levels what these do they're actually kind of a lot easier output levels they don't have a mid-tone slider but they do have a shadows and a highlight slider if you move oh my goodness i should have just kept it there if you move the shadows slider up you're going to see that the image gets a whole lot darker and kind of dull too this is because it's telling gimp that this on the bar wherever the slider is you want that to be the darkest the image ever gets so if you went through all these pixels in the image this tone would be the darkest that the image would ever get and same with this if you move it down it gets darker because it's just limiting it it's a threshold like not a threshold a barrier i guess it's like this is the lightest or the brightest i ever want the image to get so that's a pretty simple explanation also there are some tools down here called all channels now um i think auto is going to adjust the levels all of them Sorry, not all the levels, all the channels. See, as you can see, if you go to red, it's supposed to be all the way back. Green and blue. So this is just optimizing it to a setting that GIMP thinks you, that you would want. I think this will pick the black point for all of the channels. Don't worry about it. It's kind of weird. You'll understand it in a bit. And same with the mid-tones point and the highlights color picker so that's going to affect all it's going to pick the the highlight slider for all of the channels now moving on i'm just going to go to the red channel because i like red and because it's the next one now if you mess around with this let me see one second give me a second yeah it works like that so imagine it like the brighter not the brighter it gets but the highlights how do i say it? you know how the image would get lighter or brighter if you did this well if it you do that on one of the color channels it's going to add more of that color into the image so that's nice and if you do the opposite it's going to add the opposite of that color into the image that's nice and you can mess around with mid-tones too and there's also color pickers too that you can mess around with so yeah that's nice so anyway um let me see output levels what do they do and if you do this you should get yeah guessed correctly so anyway if you did this the image would get brighter because it would be saying hey this is the darkest i want the image to get therefore boosting all the dark values so the image gets more of whatever color you're on but if you do the opposite it would get darker which in this case since it's a color channel it will add the opposite of that color so that's nice and also i'm not going to go through green and blue because it's kind of really redundant but what i do want to get into is the alpha channel now this what i have to do is oh my goodness that's a huge brush let me see i have to add an alpha channel right here and if i have to oh my goodness no i don't have to do this yes i do actually i have to erase part of the image right here and then i'm going to zoom in so as you can see that there is a completely transparent part of the image, a completely opaque part of the image, and a lot of in-between stuff. So 
yeah let me see one second go back to the levels tool as you can see that now that you've added a what you might call it alpha channel to the image now that this this is not grayed out anymore you can click on alpha if you want and let me see i think the brighter the image gets the more opaque it is if i'm correct yeah as you can see if you make the image if you turn not turn it if you put this brightness slider all the way down that would make the entire image all like i think 100 percent white now if you look at this in the image right now all the pixels are either a hundred percent opaque or a hundred percent transparent so if you do the opposite everything becomes transparent so okay i get it now um yeah i'm pretty sure that's what it does so you can just make something more transparent which if it if it would be getting lighter on the value channel just imagine it like that lighter means more seeable darker means not seeable because you can't see in the dark now oh yeah there are color pickers too that you can do you can make it so that you know you can just say that you don't want that trans you want everything below a certain transparency not to show so you can do that or you can do the opposite so you want that to show okay that's nice the output levels huh oh yeah they do what this is doing is it's just telling gimp that this is the most transparent you ever want the image to get you're just setting a barrier but if you do this you're just saying hey this is the limit you're not getting past buddy this is the most opaque i ever want the image to get so yeah i think that's it i hope i explained everything correctly let me see i'm, I'm gonna zoom out uh, fit image and window and go back to the levels tool yeah pick the black point what yeah i think i was gonna i said that i was gonna explain that earlier but i think what it does is it goes through the color channels and it'll set the black point to whatever you clicked on depending on the color okay i see same with the midtones and the highlights so if you click on it it's under all channels so that's it's just going to go through all the color channels and it's going to see where it fits up on the blue spectrum and then it's going to set that to your black point so yeah that's what it does okay and you can always edit it in curves too if you want not that i really know how to use this anyway yeah so okay I guess I'm done with this tutorial. I was expecting it to go a little bit longer, but uh, if you guys have any questions, post them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.